Okay. Summer Brown, Winston-Salem State. Here. Nathan Wong for SciTech. Here. Joseph Cox, Winston-Salem State. Osir Black for SciTech. Kelly Jo Morrison from Salem College. Here. Sid Subramanian, Wake Forest. Here. And Asia Melton, Winston-Salem State. Here. Justice Purnell, Winston-Salem State. Rohit Leela Ram, UNC School of the Arts. And Kaylee Kimmerer, UNC School of the Arts. That's everyone. All righty. Thank you, Kelly. Oh. Excuse me real quick. Hey, um, this is Richard Davis. I am here. I uh, just wanted to introduce myself. I appreciate my friend, Mr. Martin, with the uh, with the kind words, but I'm, I was able to join you this afternoon. So I'm just here to listen and learn. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Davis. Um, we are going to move on to our approval of minutes. And we are approving our minutes from last meeting, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, from the January 27th meeting. Okay, wonderful. Um, hopefully everybody was able to receive and review those um, so we can move on to approving our minutes. So I move to approve our minutes from our January meeting. Does anyone second that motion? I second it. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Kelly, remind me, do we need to vote or no? I'm sorry? I said, do we need to vote still or no? Yes, we do. Okay, so we can start the voting. Um, Summer? I, well, yay, sorry. Nathan? Yay. Myself is a yay, Sid? Yay. And Asia? Asia. Did we lose Asia? I think we may have. Um, that was only four votes. So um, we need someone else to vote to approve. Give me one second. I'm going to text her and see if she can get back on. Okay. So while I'm trying to get in contact with Asia, um, if it's okay, if we could just move on and then we can come back to the approval of the minutes, is that okay. fine? Okay. Um, so yeah, so we'll just go on to our um, community presentation. So we do have a presentation from Amy Crum and Amy, I'll let you introduce yourself and let us know what you'll be talking about today. Uh Let's see. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Amy Crum. I'm the Assistant Planning Director with the Planning and Development Services Department for Winston Salem Forsyth County. Um, just a little bit about our department. I won't talk too much about it, but um, we are a city and county agency. We handle um, sort of development review for um, all of Winston Salem and then the unincorporated portions of Forsyth County. And that includes um, the inspection side of things, which is, you know, basically your building code and your uh, permitting for, you know, mechanical permit permitting, plumbing, building, electrical, those sorts of things. Uh, and then zoning enforcement. And for folks who don't know what zoning is, um, it is a legal framework that allows you to do what you can do on your property, essentially. It tells you what uses you can have, how tall your building can be, how many parking spaces you need to have, 
how far from the property lines it needs to be, those sorts of things. Um, and so we do have an ordinance, it's called uh, the Unified Development Ordinance um, or UDO. Um, and our zoning enforcement staff make sure that folks are meeting that code requirements and that they're not um, sort of abusing those code uh, um, those codes or not following them in some, some manner. Um, on the other side of the house, we have planning, which is in the house that I'm sort of in. And we do both current planning, which would be things like rezonings, which in case, you know, example would be you have a house and you want to use it for an office, you would have to have the property rezoned to do that. Um, or if you want to subdivide your property, those sorts of things would go through the current planning side of the house. And then we have what we're here to talk about today is our comprehensive planning or long range planning, which is basically looking into the future and developing a path forward on how we want to be um, grow and development as a community and what things are important to us and what we kind of amenities we want to have, what issues we want to address, those sorts of things. And these plans can be, you're looking 10, 15, 20 years down and into the road, into the future um, for how we want to grow basically as a community um, and creating that vision. Um, we also uh, staff what's known as the uh, city county planning board, which handles subdivisions and rezonings and those sorts of things, um, as well as the Public Art Commission, the Community Appearance Commission, um, the Historic Resources Commission, um, as well as the Board of Adjustment. So we have a lot of commissions that come out of our department. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see that. So what I'm here to talk about today is our main um, long range plan that we do, and it's called a comprehensive plan. And the title of it is for 2045. Um, and it's basically we're at the very, very early stages of developing this plan. So we wanted to come before our boards and commissions throughout the city and county to sort of start advertising this plan, letting folks know that it's going to be coming forward and happening, and also just start getting some input um, from, from y'all, and hopefully ask a, a favor of y'all, as I'll ask at the end, but um, as we move forward. So what in the world is a comprehensive plan? Um, it is the official planning document, um, public, public document, used to guide growth and development. Again, it is a guide. It does not change any sort of law or uh, zoning requirement. Um, it's a vision and it's driven by the community about saying how they want to grow and develop and how they want to see themselves into the future. It lays the foundation for a bunch of other plans that will get into the specifics of how we reach that vision or policies or um, lays the foundations for how taxpayer dollars and capital expenditures are spent. Um, but again, it's it's a very high level, so it doesn't get into specifics, but it really lays that foundation of where do we want to be in 10 years, 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Um, we are mandated by the state to have a comprehensive plan. Since we do our own zoning, we have a zoning ordinance. Um, we have to have a comprehensive plan that's reasonably maintained doesn't really specify what reasonably maintained means, but we do have to have one by, by law. So our current plan is the Legacy 2030 update. You can see a picture of it right there. It was done um, and approved in 2012. So it's been, been in existence for over a decade now, and we're sort of coming to the end of it. And that's why we're starting this uh, new plan now. We have been doing planning for a very long time. We are the first city county planning agency in the state, and we were enacted in 1948. So this is our 75th year. Um, you can see the different plans there listed. So these next couple of slides give you an idea of how the comp comprehensive plan works in real time. So the two policies I'm going to mention are both in actual policies within the Legacy 2030 document, um, but this is how they've been implemented. So the first one would be encourage the use of accessory dwelling units in appropriate locations. Um, accessory, accessory dwelling units are things like basement apartments or um, mother-in-law suites, carriage houses, in-law suites, things of that nature. Um, and so 
we have that blanket policy in our document. Once that document, once the comprehensive plan was adopted, we went back and like we always do, we did more research and we looked at what other peer communities are doing. How are they approaching this? We develop a recommendation, we get public input involved, and then we have an action. Um, in this case, the first action that was taken was back in 2016, um, which was UDO uh, 257, if anyone really cares. But that removes the kinship requirement and it changed the approval process. Well, five years went by and we're like, mm, this isn't really achieving what we thought it would achieve. So we went back to the drawing board, did some more research, some more um, review of our peer communities and came back with a different recommendation, got public input on that recommendation. And the action was that uh, UDO CC 15, um, which was adopted in uh, beginning of last year, changed the approval process for an accessory dwelling unit to a buy right process with the conditions. And what that means is that as long as you meet the conditions, stated in the zoning ordinance, you are allowed to do that on your property. All you would need is a permit from our permitting office. So that changed things and that's had a profound impact. Um, this past year, we've probably had 11 ADUs come through um, actually get permitted. We've had a bunch of calls. Um, so it's, it's really having the impact that we wanted it to have. Um, next policy would be encourage the formation of a public art organization that can fac facilitate the creation of a pu of public art. We are the City of Arts and Innovation, but we did not have a public art commission um, when we adopted Legacy 2030. And so that was a policy recommendation to put in place for that plan. Again, staff did research and created a recommendation. They created two plans there, which you can see listed in 2014 and 2015 that sort of laid the groundwork for the creation of the commission, which was uh, um, formed in 2015, 2016. Um, the city council adopted it, um, the language in 2015, the county adopted it in 2016. And then they developed the public art master plan um, in 2020. And since its adoption in 2016, we've had a multitude of public art projects come through. Um, some of these you may be familiar with. Um, you have the otter there on the water tower that's off of Peter Street Parkway across from the um, Lidl store. Um, you have the mural there at the fairgrounds. You have artwork that's in the Benton Convention Center, um, the artwork that's at the Central Library, and then the other three are art pieces that are at bus shelters. All of that was through the Public Art Commission and we have a lot of other public art coming through um, that's sort of in the some for some stage of, of development now. So lots more public art is coming through because of that. So when we look at this plan, what is it? What, it, what are we thinking about? Um, it will be a brand new plan. It will not be an update to the update or legacy 2030 uh, 3.0 or anything like that. It'll be a brand new plan. So it can have new recommendations. It can carry over some from legacy or it can be completely different. Um, it's really gonna depend on what kind of input we get from the public. Again, it will be a city and county plan because we are a city county agency. It'll be a 20 year plan. And you know, one of the things we're trying to do is get a lot of input from maybe sectors of the population that we have not gotten input generally in the past from, and that is the younger generation. Because when you think of a 20 year plan, for folks who are 18, 20, 25 years old or so, this is a plan that you're gonna be living with. You're gonna you're gonna inherit whatever comes out of this plan. And so we're wanting to find ways to engage um, different segments of our population to try to make sure this is as well-rounded and truly community-driven as possible. Um, unlike the legacy plan, which was chapter-based, so you had a chapter on transportation, a chapter specifically dedicated to environmental quality. This one will be driven by the vision and goals that are established by the community. Everything that it'll be laid out to sort of feed back into what the vision is and what the goals are. And key here, it'll be short. Um, the legacy plan is like 250 pages or so. We want to keep this 100 pages or less. So really stream it down, make it simplify it, get rid of the planner speech um, so that any individual who picks it up can really understand where we're heading towards in the future, where we see ourselves being and what kind of community we see ourselves being into the future. Um, we have a lot of areas of consideration that we've talked about amongst our staff. 
um, how these are addressed still up in the air, but these are items that we know that somehow need to be talked about in some manner. Um, obviously, equity is a very key piece. Um, we have the um, feeling that this needs to be addressed throughout the document, not a blanket statement in the beginning, but throughout the document from recommendations to the pictures we use, everything has to sort of have that lens of equity throughout. Obviously, housing and affordability are key. We are in a housing shortage right now, which um, particularly for affordable housing, which sort of they go hand in hand. Um, in terms of resiliency, you think climate change, you think economic resiliency, we've lost since Legacy 2030 was adopted, we've lost some headquarters that used to be here. They have since moved out. So that's that's a key factor. Also, we came out of that pandemic. Um, so when you think of that, that changed the world of office and how much office space we use. So what do you do with office space that has that's currently sitting vacant or underutilized? What can that be? Um, the use of public space, um, that became very key during uh, the pandemic. And so all of those things um, talked about resiliency. Um, moving towards adaptability, things change very, very quickly. And we need to be able to adapt and take advantage of those changes as they come and not sort of be behind the eight ball as much as we are um, and be able to adapt to different things, different technologies that are coming our way. Um, you know, a good example is that, you know, one day there were no scooters on the streets and the next day there were scooters on the streets. And so how do you adapt to that um, change? Um, making sure that we are an accessible community in terms of physical accessibility, making sure people can actually access the amenities and resources we have. Um, ideas like the digital divide and addressing that, but also making sure that we're accessible for people who want to move here, that they can feel like they can start a life here, they can start their, their um, jobs or their, their businesses here, uh, making sure that we're accessible in that ma manner. The logistics for economic development, um, that really speaks to making sure that we have the items in place that makes us attractive for companies to to start businesses here or, or locate portions of their businesses and operations here. That goes into having land available, having an infrastructure available, but also things like quality of life and amenities that so that people and their workers will actually want to live here and they'll actually want to be able to attract people here to um, fill those uh, employment opportunities that we, they'll create. In terms of livability, this is just quality of life. Having those amenities in place that people have a really high quality of life, so people aren't just surviving, they're thriving. And that goes from, you know, housing to having places to eat and things to do on the weekend and parks and recreation, all kinds of, of things go into um, quality of life. Sustainability, I don't think I need to talk about much um, with that is tourism, again, making sure that we're a destination that people want to come to and spend their money, uh, essentially. And then um, current history is a key factor. We talk a lot about the Moravians and R.J. Reynolds, which is wonderful and it really speaks to our tourism factor. Um, but what we're really dealing with from a planning perspective and a development perspective are decisions that were made over the last century. So when you think of the advent of the sub, uh, subdivisions that was post-World War II, the advent of people going from being sort of a trolley transit sort of geared community to that of an auto-centric uh, community due to um, the subdivisions essentially being a, more of a suburban uh, community. You have the advent of urban renewal, which, you know, we've lost neighborhoods from that. We lost businesses from that. We developed housing projects and, you know, US 52 was created um, out, out of urban renewal. Um, all of that speaks to what's going on now and then what the factors that we're having to deal with now, we don't talk about a whole lot. So that's what we, one of the issues we want to uh, sort of talk about and address as, as much as we can with this plan. So the next steps will be, we do have a website, it's for 2045com It's not live yet, so don't go looking for it. You won't come up with anything, um, but we will have one. Um, and then we will have survey. Um, coming out here in the next month. It will be through a um, platform called MetroQuest. So it'll be very interactive and you can use it on any sort of device um, you like. And then obviously we're in the process now of doing stakeholder input meetings. And then we will doing some more public sort of in-person type of meetings in the spring, early summer. Um, one of the things we want to get through doing these stakeholder input meetings that we're doing now with the board and commissions 
is for y'all to help us market this, for y'all to say, hey, these are some groups that you need to speak to, or hey, I'm part of a book club or this group or that group. This I'd l- love for y'all to come and speak to us about this because this is really important. We would love to come. Absolutely do- love to come to any of your groups, organizations, and f- love for y'all to share, you know, once the website's up, once the survey's out, to help us get that word out because we need as much input as we possibly can get. Um, and then with that, um, I do have a couple public um some so input exercises if folks want to provide some input you know while we have why have you here um i'm gonna ask you a couple questions if anybody wants to chime in either in the chat or or um just chime in it's really open-ended the first one is um what are you looking for when thinking about where to start your careers you know basically what amenities or characteristics are important to you um and it can be anything um, any sort of input you want to provide, um, I, we'd love it. I, I, I have a, I have a pad of paper here and I'd love to write anything down. If something that you're really key on that you're like, I want to be in a community that has whatever, um, or what's important where you're thinking about, um, that's on your mind. Um, I'd love to hear from anybody. Um, I can go first. Um, uh, something I'm thinking about in regards to like where to start my career. I mean, I'm a junior right now, so I've actually been kind of thinking about this stuff already. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely want somewhere that has like places for young adults. So not necessarily like nightclubs or anything, but just like restaurants that kind of cater to a younger audience, um, possibly places that do like, like more kind of activity-based places. So like maybe like candle making, um, pottery areas, stuff like that. And along with that, um, easier access, parking downtown is um, difficult. (laughs) Um, So along with these new amenities, we need to be able to get to them. Hey, Kelly Jo, this is Wanda. And, And hi, Cab, it's good to see you all up here. And thank you, Ms. Amy, for joining us. Um, I wanted to speak to your point about transportation. How important is it that you have uh, public transportation, particularly a diverse um, choice of public transportation, i.e. buses, light rail, things like that, you know, things like that. What do you you think about that? Um, I have done traveling in Europe. And it was really great to be on a train with Wi-Fi to get where I needed to be and not have to take my car or, and I really think that we are missing that here. And we have some, um, I'll call them bedroom communities that probably would access that kind of transportation to get into town, um, to spend their time downtown if that were available. So light rail, yes. Okay, and I was, I was just add, curious. Oh, I was just going to add when you talk about transportation, you know, we talk about you know the, the automobile vehicles, whether you know trains, buses, cars, but also be thinking about alternative modes of transportation: biking, walking. You know, I mentioned scooters all of that goes into transportation. And if that's something that you all would like to see more of, those are the kinds of input that we need to hear. And that's the kind of stuff that we need to hear. Um, so we can include that into this plan. So um, all of that's good, good information. Definitely bike paths and safe bike paths. <laughs> people here are not accustomed to seeing people traveling on bicycles. Um, And I would not ride a bike downtown because of there's no designated bike path um, on most streets. And even when there are, um, sometimes folks don't know how to utilize them or don't know how to stay out of them when they're not supposed to be in them. So there's an education piece that goes along with that as well, I think.
All right. Um, the next question I had, how to deal with strengths and opportunities, sort of what are the positives that you see in our community that we need to be building off of? And basically, you know, when you think about this area, think about starting your careers or, or the next couple of years, what would make you, what about this community would make you stay, essentially? Um, and again, it could be, it could be anything. I don't want to do all the talking, but I really enjoy the live music events when they close Liberty Street down on a Saturday and we have everybody in the streets. I've seen communities really come together at those live music events. Sid, Nathan, you guys are very quiet. I know you've got some thoughts. Yeah, I guess I can go. I mean, for me, one of the uh, major things that would make me uh, like attracted to living in the community would be that cultural element, that diversity, especially um, kind of living in the suburbs. It's kind of hard to get that, which is why it's always good and fun to travel into the city, the urban centers to have that experience. So I think more cultural um, festivals, more cultural awareness, especially in the community with you know, festivals for various holidays, be it for Chinese, for Asian holidays, um, or, or even based on different religions, just having more of those events in like community spaces and celebrating that would definitely make me want to uh, see more of a future for, my, for myself in Winston-Salem. Otherwise, of course, like it makes other areas like Greensboro and Charlotte much more attractive for people kind of seeking that type of element. But I still definitely think that like any urban center, any city can be made into that kind of diversity hub, which is of course like one of the major important things for me in finding a place to start a career. Yeah, and kind of piggybacking off of like Sid and Kelly, um, I've also noticed that like the events and festivities, they definitely bring people together and having those we can leverage to um, build on into the future. All right. My last one is sort of the opposite. Um, so what are the sort of weaknesses or threats that are facing our community that we really need to address? Um, sort of the negatives that you see. Um, and then, you know, again, you know, kind of why wouldn't you, what about this area would make you look elsewhere to, to live and start your careers? Um, and some of these times, some things that are, you know, an opportunity can also be a weakness or a threat, and depending on how you phrase it, it could be one or the other, but um, any any neg negatives that you see, you know, drawbacks um, that we really need to be addressing. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a negative per se. I just think um, the city could kind of just do a better job at like kind of utilizing what they have. Like Winston-Salem is like a really big college city, like there are so many like colleges, universities here. And I feel like there aren't really like, like the city doesn't necessarily have like enough like events or just enough things that cater to the college community that's present in the city. Um, so I think that maybe like more um, youth targeted events possibly. Um, just getting college students out in the city of Winston-Salem. Like I've done a lot of exploring of the city myself, which I think is good. But I think that if there were, to, if the city were to have like events, maybe at like local businesses or anything for college students, I think that'd be a really good way of getting co these college students in the community. Y'all gotta have some more negatives. That's usually the one that people talk about a lot. They like to throw out there a lot. Um, Amy, maybe. this is Richard. Um, I'll mention this, and I say this as someone who is, what, six weeks into living in uh, the Winston-Salem area. Um, I wouldn't necessarily characterize this as a, win a weakness or a threat, maybe just an observation. Take it how you, how you want to. Um, Winston-Salem is not... Charlotte, it's not Raleigh. That's not just that's not a bad thing though. 
I think that if there's some intentionality about leaning into the fact that, you know, it is smaller and it does have a, a large college population, uh, you can get the things that you need. You can build a life for yourself and you don't have to travel, you know, an hour and 20 minutes south or two hours uh, east uh, for nightlife. I just think that to me, I was pleasantly surprised as I was going through the recruiting process to learn what I did about the community. Um, and, and I kind of feel like if you're someone who's maybe not from the area, there's a great opportunity to educate um, about all the things that are there um, and that you don't have to be exposed only to the two large metropolitan areas as you probably hear about on a day in and day out basis. So you wanna call it branding, just be more intentional about the branding of the community. Um, I, I would I would highlight that. And yeah, that is a, a key thing is that when we do anything, we wanna make sure that we remain who we are. We don't need to be another Greensboro. We don't need to be another Roanoke, uh, Greenville, trying to go anybody else that, you know, sort of this mid-sized Southern town. We need to be us. And that goes back to, in planner words, that goes back to this idea of placemaking, making sure that people know that they have arrived somewhere and they know, and they can remember it. It doesn't blend into everything else that is distinctive and, and stands out. Um, and that helps build our identity and helps build things like tourism, why people want to come back, why people want to move here and things like that. It's because you have this distinct identity. Um, a good example is that if you think about uh, Savannah and Charleston, they're both, they're fairly close together. They're both coastal towns. They're both in the South, but they're distinctly different um, places. Boston is not New York City, even though they're fairly close together. They have their own identity. And, and depending on who you are, you may like one more than the other. You may hate both or, or you may love both. Who knows? But um, it's just really setting yourself apart so people know that they have arrived they're not confused by where they are. They know that they're in Winston-Salem. They know they're here. Um, and it can be simple things. Um, a good example would be Pittsburgh. You know, everyone, if you see a picture of Pittsburgh and you see a picture of a town on a river with gold bridges, it's Pittsburgh. It's a simple, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's paint essentially. Um, but it's very iconic. Public art also does that. You know, Chicago, the bean, you know, all that. There's things like that. Public art is another way to really be iconic in a way and distinctive and set yourself apart so people know um, you are where you are. Um, but also highlighting what the positives about what we have going on here that, you know, you don't have to go to Charlotte and Raleigh. You can come here and not have to deal with tons and tons of traffic. And Amy, in that vein, the one thing I would highlight, and it is a let, let's say it's an opportunity. I don't like to say it's a weakness. It's an opportunity. Yeah. Um, air travel. That is a thing because uh, being realistic, uh, Charlotte and Raleigh do offer from an air travel standpoint, more direct flights and, and more um, air traffic, more destinations compared to um, um, the PTI GSO airport. So not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but I, I, I would be remiss if I did not say that as someone who in a former life worked for a um, Department of Transportation. I can understand, you know, the role that transportation plays in uh, economic development. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we can't, I don't, I don't want, you know, a weakness in the threat doesn't nece necessarily have to be wholly bad, you know, in a way of, of saving it. You can't make change unless you know what's wrong. You know, you can't improve unless you know what's where the, the weaknesses are, where the holes are that you need improved. So stating them is not a bad thing. We, we need to have those conversations. We need to bring them to the forefront so we can actually address them. Um, but um, does anybody have anything else you'd like to add? Okay. So um, if you have any questions, um, I'm here. That's my contact information. If you think of any ideas, you can just shoot me an email and just say, hey, I was thinking about XYZ. And this, I think this would be great. If you know of any groups on campus or anybody I can talk to on your campuses about coming and maybe setting up a table somewhere, if, if you got some insight on how to get 
folks to that table if it's if it's still pizza and donuts and coffee and stuff like that like it was in my day let us know like we're, we're I'm here for any any feedback you can give to try to get input um from as many people from across the spectrum of the community as I can we're here for it so if you have some ideas if you know some some people we need to reach out to if you know some groups to contact please you know let me know I'm, I'm absolutely open for that feedback with that I will that's all I have um hopefully I didn't take up too much of your all's time um but I thank you for op the opportunity to come and speak with y'all um, be on the lookout for 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 2045 um and uh please again take our survey share our survey share the website share my contact information and i'm happy to answer anybody's question um and respond to anybody um about this so if you have any ideas or anything like that please let me know um again thank you thank you so much Thank you, Amy. Um, okie doke. Um, that was actually really good. I wasn't expecting to get so much out of you. Um, we can move on to our general business. Um, it shouldn't be too much longer. It won't hold us too long today. Um, so firstly, moving into our committee discussion reports, I know not every uh, chair is here, but of the ones that are here, we can just briefly discuss, anybody can go first. Uh, in our committee meeting, uh, we discussed about the spring newsletter. And Maybe just getting... committee for everyone here. Oh, sorry, uh, chair of public relations. Um, so for the spring newsletter that uh, we would like the involvement of um, everyone on the board and uh, we really just discussed the ideas that we had in our in the current time uh, for me uh, I think I'm going to write about like the renovations uh, at the library at, at my school uh, Forsyth Tech and I believe that Asia was going to write about something um, going on at her school as well um, and as I mentioned before um, we hope to get more ideas from everyone in the board and to write about to write articles uh, for the letter. Very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Osir is not here for government relations committee. Um, Kelly, if you have anything to report, that would be great. We did not meet. Okay, no problem. Alrighty, moving right along. Um. Mm -hmm. Are we missing someone? We are. Our community relations. Um, Joseph and I briefly spoke. Um, just a matter of getting more information about. Um, well, actually, I personally was working on the uh, farmers market. The um, oh, what is the word? The partnership with the university so that college students are able to use the farmer's market. Um, we are still working on that. I'm still kind of trying to navigate who exactly I should be speaking to. Um, I did speak to um, Mr. John Capel here. He is our interim dean of students, if I'm not mistaken. Um, associate dean of students, assistant associate, one of the titles. Um, but Ms., uh, Dr. John Capel is who I spoke to um, I will be following up with him, though. I will be seeing him in another meeting, so I will follow up with him and see if we can kind of get the ball rolling on that. Madam Chair. Ma'am. You are referring to um, um, Mr. or Dr. Capel at Winston-Salem State, correct? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you're aware since I missed the first few minutes, but you do have Mr. Richard Davis on today. Mm -hmm. um, during, he's, he's a part of the meeting today. And so I wanted to give um, Mr. Davis an opportunity to chime in because I know that, hi, Mr. Davis, I tried to catch you up a little bit and I know you've spoken with, with Chris. And so I don't know if you would know um, kind of what direction this needs to go in and who needs to be involved from WSSU for our chair. 
Yeah, I'm going to fall on the sword on that one and say that I don't have a concrete answer. I apologize. Um, I'm, in, in the interest of full disclosure, I will tell you I'm in Raleigh today, and um, I've been playing catch up with a lot of our uh, government partners as, as my part of my onboarding. That's really been a lot of my priority. Um, I have elevated the issue. Um, and spoken with the chief of staff uh, to put it on her radar. And we've, you know, had some, I guess, um, very high level discussions, but as far as like having a, you know, definitive course of action or a next step, we've not um, gone there yet. So um, here's what I'll do. I can, I can make a commitment to this group that between now and when we come together again, um, I'll work with that group to get some clarity about next steps and action items and what needs to happen um, so that, you know, we'll be able to move this along. I don't just want it to linger. And it feels like, or at least from what I've been able to gather, it's lingered for a while now. And um, I'm one of those people that actually likes getting stuff done. So uh, I'll see what I can do uh, to to um, elevate that and get it in the, the right people's uh, radar so that we can get some sort of clarity and resolution sooner rather than later. That would be awesome. I think that would be really helpful, Madam Chair, if um, you could just plan to work with um, Mr. Davis, uh, because of course, we're just wanting to make sure that we have the connection for the RAM card with the city farmer's market. Right. And from the city's end, the city is is ready. Okay. They, they've green lighted the whole thing. They, they've um, put it in writing. And so now it's just a matter of coordinating it on Winston-Salem State's end. And so for those of you who remember what the blueprint was with the National League of Cities grant, we were to work on um, food insecurity and we were to work on housing insecurity as well. So that's the food side. And the housing side is that I've spoken with the assistant city attorney about um, having our city attorney's office to issue a formal um, interpretation or opinion of our Housing Justice Act which is a local law or ordinance that we have on the books that is inclusive of affordable housing and the fact that the city encourages affordable housing to be made available um, to residents who need affordable housing. And we want it to be interpreted um, officially to include student housing. And so the, the inference or the assumption is that of course, you know, it would include student housing but we wanted to really have that um, officially in writing to say that it does include student housing so that we can raise that awareness, that level of awareness, so that when those affordable housing units are available, that students who uh, reside off campus are not forgotten, that they are included in the availability of the affordable housing stock. So that's where we are on the housing side. Wonderful. Wanda should, um... Should Osir and I reach out to you to follow up with that? Yes, that would be fine. Please do, because that'll that kind of him. nudge me. Yes, that would be great. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, of course, absolutely. And um, also, Mr. Davis, if you could just, um, whenever you get any updates, please let me know. Um, I may be able to email you on Outlook. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, if not, I will, I'll probably find you some way, somehow. Um, we will have some sort of correspondence still. Um, I definitely will be following up, um, so that we can get the ball rolling. I, I think it would be great for the university, especially for our students. Um, so I definitely do want to get that implemented as yeah. soon as. I'm in Blair Hall. Uh, okay. I'm generally on site um, without being in Raleigh or pulled in a different direction. Uh, I'm generally on site Tuesdays and Thursdays. So oh. if um, that works for you to try to come over and we can do something in person, that'd be great. Otherwise I'm available by email as your schedule. So I'm All right. Yeah, that's wonderful. That works for me Tuesdays and Thursdays okay. are my more open days. So nice. um, yes, definitely just when any updates arise, but I, I'll come for sure. Okay, great. Um, so next, oh, were the, I think that was, was that all the committees? Or am I missing one? Everyone, was that, was that all of them? 
Mm-hmm. I think did yeah. Kelly Joe um, report out on government? Y'all did government yeah. relations, mm-hmm. right? That's it. Okay. And and was there mention of government relations doing um or or trying to coordinate a time for CAB to attend a city council meeting this semester? And hopefully it could be during the time that CAB is presenting its annual report. Did you all mention anything about that? Did I miss that part? Um, the government relations committee did not meet, Wanda. I will um, get in touch with OSEER, who is our chair, and bring up the scheduling of the committee meeting. <clears throat> I know last year we did that meeting, I think it was the end of April, is that correct? Yes. I will sometime add that to in April. Minutes. It might be mid April. Okay. It, it could be closer to mid April, but it is sometime in, in April. I'm sorry, were you all finished? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know if you already done or not. Um, so next, since we are finished with our committee reports, we can move on to National League of Cities Committee of Practice on addressing the basic needs of post-secondary students. If there is anything else that needs to be reported, I know we kind of briefly talked about a little bit of everything. Okay, so I'm getting a note. So um lastly, I think, I'm sorry, Summer. I think the last thing we have to discuss there is um, we have a report that we have to write. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to bring these three items to a close so that we can write that final report. Um, Do we want to set ourselves a self-imposed deadline of of when we need to get these follow-ups completed so that we can get to that point? Um, I do think that would be good. Um, I think it's a matter of what exactly it is that everything, um, well, what exactly are the three major things that we do need to have definitively done? Because I feel like we're all kind of working on a little bit of everything. Um, So for each committee, what necessarily is like the final thing that needs to be finished and reported on? And I know we had assigned some things earlier in the year Um, Maybe if we go back to some of those earlier minutes, it will give us a clue of some of the things that we need to do. I know there's some documentation um, that was put together by the analyst that analyzed all of the information they received from the surveys, and that needs to be included in the report. Um, So I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a bad idea probably to have a meeting just to discuss that with the committee chairs um, and maybe, I don't know, one to, uh, the committee meetings, we don't have to televise or record, correct? It will, all of that depends on the quorum. And so if it's not a majority of CAB that will be coming together, then um, you all can, can, can do that business without there having to be an official public meeting. Okay. So the public meeting piece is triggered by having a quorum of the college advisory board. You only have three committees. And so if it's the three chairs coming together, that would be fine. And maybe um, if, if our chair, if Summer wants to be there, that's, that's mm-hmm. fine. And we do need to have someone from staff there as well. So it would be really imperative to have Chris included or myself. Someone from staff needs to be included in that. Okay, that's no problem. Um, I would say after this meeting, um, myself or Kelly can send an email kind of just following up on what we're talking about right now so that we can set a date for all of the chairs to meet as well as a staff member. So kind of, honestly, I think it's really just based on whoever's schedule is open enough. Um, I'm not picky about who comes, but definitely our three chairs, I'll definitely be in attendance. And yeah, just whichever staff member is um, available would be ideal. Um, So yes, and after, I will say after that chair meeting, we can then um, amongst the chairs, we'll set a, a, um, I'm sorry, oh my goodness, a deadline. I 
losing my mind. Uh, we can set a deadline after that, at that chair's meeting for everything to be finished and completed so that we do, are able to present our final report at that um, board meeting. I think that is pretty good. Um, next, we have our meeting schedule. Um, March meeting. Our March, because I'm thinking we're just trying to figure something else out. Um, so yes, for our March meeting. So we meet, what is today? Is today the last Wednesday of the month? Um, I think today is the last Wednesday. Of the today month. is. It is. Okay. So since today is the last Wednesday of the month, so we are at... So for March, are we okay with meeting on, because we actually could meet exactly a month from now, which is the 22nd. We could meet, or is there another day that we would like to meet? A different day of the week is the Wednesday fine for everyone. Um, would we prefer a Thursday? Anyone? Madam Chair, to be consistent, perhaps a Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, March 22nd would be good. Um, you know, just so it kind of keeps everybody thinking about that day of the week for CAB. So I think, I that's, think it would be fine from a staff side. If we did the last Wednesday of the month, that would even have more consistency. Mm -hmm. I think, right. That's, right. I think right. that's fine. Um, Which would be March the 29th. Yes. Oh, you say, oh, I got you. Okay. Madam Chair, I just wanted to ask a question because I know uh, Mr. Davis told us that he, he sometimes traveled in the Raleigh. So I just wanted to make sure, is he going to be able to jump on like you did tonight or is that going to be an inconvenience? I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I'll, I'll make this a priority and I'll be here whenever it gets scheduled. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. I'm perfectly fine with keeping the last Wednesday of the month. Um, I did only suggest possibly changing the day given um, our attendance for today. Um, we do sometimes have more people than we uh, than we do today. Um, I do know that our school, um, a lot of the people who are also um, representatives of WSSU are also at CIAA right now representing our university. So I do, I am keeping that in mind as well in regards to attendance. Um, but I do know some people can normally come on like a Thursday when we did have our Thursday meetings. But if Wednesdays are what we would like to stay with for the sake of consistency, I'm perfectly, totally okay with that. Um, this was a decent time for me as well. So as long as that's fine. We also, I'm sorry, Summer. Please go ahead. Um, we also had good attendance at the noon meeting, the 1230 meeting. Yes, we did also have that. Um, so we could look to change the time of day uh, if this was not a good time, but that's also contingent upon the group. If there is any conversation to be had about it, please let's have it now. Um, if there are no objections to us keeping this time, I'm sorry, everyone, I'm trying to charge my computer. Was, was 1230 on a, uh, was that on a Wednesday or was it on a, another day of the week? I don't remember. Oh, let me go back and look. Yes, when was that 12.30 meeting? I think it was January. Uh, I believe it was on a Friday. That was a Friday, absolutely. Yes, Friday the 27th of January from 12.30 to 1.30. So we could also meet on a Friday at 12.30. Um, we did have a lot of people show up to that meeting. Um, also, I know not everyone wants to do work on Fridays, so that's okay if you all don't want to do work on Fridays. Um, this Wednesday is fine for me, um, as well as possibly a Thursday. That would be okay, too. Um, but if everyone's okay with the time that we're meeting right now, as well as meeting at the end of um, each month going forward, well, the last Friday of each month going forward, then that can simply be our day. Madam Chair, suggests that maybe we just take a quick informal 
um, poll and just ask people's preferences because uh, mm -hmm. we're talking about a lot, of, a lot of different days of the week now. We're talking Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, um, yes, and all of that. So <laughs> talking different times. Yeah, so we kind of need to nail it down. And so mm -hmm. is there a day that absolutely, of the week, that absolutely will not work for anybody who's present on the call right now? Um, Friday at noon, actually. <laughs> the last time that I attended the Friday meeting, I had to cancel uh, one of my volunteer events. So okay, okay. so that. that's a volunteer day for you, Fridays? Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Is Thursday a bad day for anybody? It would depend on the time of day for me. Same. During the okay. day, I cannot meet on Tuesdays or Thursdays, but I can meet after 3.30. Okay. And how about Wednesdays? Um, I would say to, oh. I'm so sorry. I will say today's Wednesday was fine. Um, I do normally have NAACP meetings on Wednesdays, but we do meet bi-weekly. So it just depends on if it falls on that bi-week. Um, uh, okay. But also, um, we right. do that, so it's kind of just depends. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and, and let's uh, plan for a Wednesday, like you all originally said. Maybe you can stick to that and just understanding that um, we'll staff will send something out to confirm so that the rest of the cab membership can see it. But just be on standby and understand that that could change depending on what everybody else is able to do. But we need to go ahead and nail down something. So let's stick with that Wednesday that you all originally recommended. And then uh, perhaps we can um, look at either the 22nd or the 29th. Um, I know I was with you, Summer, and thinking about the 22nd because it was exactly a week out. I mean, I'm sorry, a month out. And so, um, but if we need to do the 29th, so be it as well. So if no one has a strong preference, it, it can be your call, Summer, whether it'll be the 22nd or the 29th. Um, I will say the 22nd being that it is an exact month away from today. Um, okay. We'll do the 22nd. Um, and I do advise everyone on this meeting, um, please, when they do send out the um, the notification for the, um, for the meetings, please confirm or deny via the RSVP because that will help us get an idea of how many people will be showing up or how many people won't. Because if we, if we don't have at least five people, then we can't conduct formal business. So just confirm or deny on there. Just press yes to confirm, no to decline. Um, if more than enough people do decline and say that they are not available, then we can move forward with possibly changing the day or finding something else that works for everyone. Exactly. So can we ask that um, the meeting invite go ahead and go out now, as opposed to waiting to close to the day? And that way you have time to react. And normally it does. It's just that, again, we've been through a staff transition and we let you all know that via email. And so that explains why it was getting out later than normal. And so um, we just, we definitely will go back to doing what we usually do, which is getting it out in advance of just a day or two. That sounds good. Understood. All righty, um, so we will be meeting, our next meeting will be March 22nd, um, five o'clock, we'll say, five o'clock for our next meeting. Um, and then moving on to our staff reminders slash information. Um, so our file newsletter approval. Um, I thought we approved our file newsletter last meeting. Um, well, actually, my article was to be submitted. Um, Nathan, I will send my article over to you. Once we adjourn our meeting, I'll just email it to you and you can add it into, um, you do have access to the fall newsletter. Uh, I don't, but I can probably email Jamie. Okay. 
So if you are able to get access to the fall newsletter, because we did see the fall newsletter last meeting, if you are able to get access to it, um, I'll send over my article that, so that that can be added to it. If you're not able to get access to it, it's perfectly fine. I can just submit it for the spring newsletter and it can just go in there. Yeah, sounds good. Actually, actually, you all, I thought the fall newsletter was a done deal um, and you all just needed to approve it at this point. And then the spring newsletter is what we need to get articles for. But we will check on that too. We'll circle back again, going through staff transition, but yeah. we will follow up with you via email. But I do believe the fall newsletter is done. So now it's just a matter of getting articles for the spring newsletter yeah. and getting you all to, yeah, agree on what you want to write about for the spring. Yes, that's fine. We were kind of just under the impression that it wasn't finished just yet, but that's fine if it is done. Oh, I think so, it is. I think it is. And like I said, if you all didn't, Chris, do you remember, did you send that one out to Cab, the fall newsletter? Or do you remember seeing it sent out? Do y'all remember getting it? Okay, we'll circle back on it again. I remember Jamie sending that out before she left. I said, I remember Okay, Jamie that's what I thought. Yeah. I'm, I'm checking my email right now. Y'all keep Yes, going. we got it from Jamie. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought so. So the fall newsletter is a done deal. Okay. I Honestly, I have never yeah. seen I haven't seen like the final version. Um, I don't recall getting it. Check your Wait. email. Yeah, check your check your email, okay? Because she sent okay. that probably, I don't know, at least a week or two ago. Okay. At least. No I'll, I'll definitely check out for it. Um, so in regards to our spring newsletter, um, what were, I do remember us having a brief conversation about it at our last meeting about what the articles were that were going into it. Um, if Nathan, can you give a recap or Kelly um, about what the articles were that were going into it? or the articles that we already have to go into it, if any. Sorry, for the spring or the fall one? For the spring. Um, for me, at least, I know the article that I was gonna write was um, Library Renovations at Forsyth Tech. Mm -hmm. um, Asia, uh, she wasn't exactly sure on what she was gonna write yet, but I think it was something at WSSU. And that's so far, that's what we have for articles. Okay. Yeah. So if those are the only two articles that we have, um, did anybody else have any other article that they wanted to contribute or any other ideas of articles that they wanted to write for the newsletter? Well, if somebody can started... attend the Black History Month Showcase of Song, that would be a good one to write about. That's this weekend um, on Saturday at Union Baptist. And so that, that showcase is one of the city's um, key Black History Month programs. And it will focus on the history of music. And it goes back from the African diaspora up to present day music. And um, it should be very interesting. And so hopefully if someone from CAB or if a few of you can attend that, that would be a really good one to write about. Yes, um, I will, I myself will try to attend actually. Um, I will see if any other members from WSSU would like to attend. Um, if not, I'll definitely reach out to our um, NAACP chapter and see if any of our other, if any of our members would like to attend as well as our e-board. Awesome, thank you. And also, I'll um, I'll probably write something as the chair for the newsletter. Um, since I did miss it last semester, uh, last newsletter, I'll definitely try to write something for this this upcoming one. Great, great. Um, other than that, does anybody else have anything else that they would like to contribute to the newsletter? I will find something to contribute. Okay. All right. If nobody else has anything else, that sounds good. Um, and lastly, we have our upcoming events. Um, I know that Ms. Wanda just said the um, Black History Month program at Union Baptist Church this weekend. Um, did anybody else have 
um, anything from the city of Winston-Salem and or from our college campuses that they wanted to let us know about. Anything, everyone? Anything, anything? Were there any more um, City of Winston-Salem events? Um, this is Kelly. We do None that I'm event. aware of. Okay. We do have an event um, tomorrow evening that might interest some of you. Um, let me pull it up here real quick. We will have um, Dr. Marsha Chatelaine, who wrote the book. Um, <clears throat> sorry, The Golden Arches, and oh, I'm trying to find the title, exact title of the book. Um, she is our uh, Black History Month um, engaging ethics speaker. Um, she will be in the uh, Fine Arts Center at 4.30 p.m. tomorrow. Her talk is um, about her book. Um, she will be doing a book signing after the talk. And I cannot find the title of the book to save me right now, and I don't want to say it incorrectly. Um, she wrote the franchise, The Golden Arches in Black America. Um, and I'm told by those who have already read it that it's very well written and they've enjoyed reading the book. So um, she will be here again tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. in the Fine Arts Center. Okay, thank you, Kelly, for sharing. Um, I'm also the secretary for our NAACP chapter here at Winston-Salem State University. Um, we do have some events coming up. When we are definitive on those events, I will definitely share that with you all so that you all can come and attend and check us out. Does anybody have anything else? Um, we have one open item still left. Were you able to get Asia? Yes, I was able to get Asia. Um, that's what I was going to move on to right after our events. Um, so moving kind of back up earlier in our agenda. So we just simply just need to approve our minutes from our January meeting. Um, and we can get that started, actually. So I move to approve the minutes from the January meeting. Does anyone second that motion? Second that motion. Okay, and we can it's start. already been seconded and voted on by everyone except Asia, and we require her vote to have a quorum. So Asia, if you could just vote for us for our approval of minutes, we can wrap this up. Sorry, I approve. Thank you. And if that is all then I will adjourn this meeting at 6.13 p.m. It was great. See you all in March. Great meeting, Summer. I pulled up thank the uh, newsletter. I'm going to send it to you. Okay, yes, please do. Thank you. All thank, right, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.